chair one more time, Pastor, every Tuesday morning. That's my place right there, kneeling up in that chair and holding on to the back of the chair. And God has been faithful. And because of the 5 a.m. prayer that the Lord birthed in my spirit right here in this room, this prayer, this altar right here, has taken me all over this world. This altar. I know what's in this house. I know the power that's in this house. I don't know about nobody else, church, but I know, I know what can get birth out here. God has done that. He has taken me to all parts of the world. Church all over the country. And I've never lost my fire and my desire and my passion for prayer. He birthed it out in me in this place for real. And the Lord said to me the other day when I was praying, when he spoke that to me, Pastor, he said, you're getting ready to embark on one of the greatest assignments that I have ever given you. And you're calling a nation to the dome in prayer. And he said, for every level, if you look at the pattern, for every level that I have taken you, I've taken you to those levels from this altar. And he said, it's time for you to go to your next level. And you can't go until you come back home. You can't go until you come back home and grab a hold to the horns of the altar in this house. And I'm going to do a fresh and a new and a mighty thing. So I'm not coming back to pray for you. I'm coming back because God is about to do a new, a fresh, and a mighty on the inside of me. I am just excited. I just began to weep and cry. And the Lord said, it's time for another digging out. It's time for another purging. It's time for another uprooting. It's time for some more snot to come out of your nose. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So February the 28th, to all of you who are in the overflow room and all over this building, we will be here and God is going to do something he has never done before. I believe that. I believe he's going to do something so supernatural that is going to astound us. Thank you, Jesus. Eyes haven't seen, nor ears have heard. Neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things that the Lord has in store for those of us that love him. Are you excited about it? Because I am. So I'm asking, I'm asking every person in this building, my home city, it's time for us to be birthed to the next level and we're going to come and do it together. Amen? When the Lord puts something in the spirit, you don't want to miss your time. The Bible said Jesus looked out over Jerusalem and he wept because they knew not their time of visitation. And we are about to be visited by the Holy Spirit and we're not going to miss it. I'm not going to miss it. I started out in this building with three people and myself. Amen, somebody. And I kept coming when the doors was open, when they wasn't open, when it was cold outside. And I just grabbed a hold to that fence out there that was up on the wall. And I stayed out there and I prayed. And I was faithful. And the Lord said, it's a faithful man that shall abound with blessings. He didn't tell you to look at the condition. When he tells you to do something, he means do it. And so it, the Lord just allowed us to persevere. So if I'm here by myself, February 28th, every Tuesday. This is where I would be, on this altar right here. Amen, somebody. Get your Bibles. I'm not going to prolong the time. I believe that the Lord has sent me because it is time for our next level. It is time for us to go to the next place in him. He has called us to a higher place. The song says, Zion is calling us to a higher place of praise. And so often we think that the word praise just means what comes out of our mouths. But the word praise also denotes what comes out of our lifestyle. A lifestyle is what gives God more glory than anything that you can ever let come out of your mouth. Amen, somebody. Hey, sis. So good to see you. Turn with me. Um, we're going to start in a very familiar scripture. We're going to start in a familiar scripture. The book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews. And I'm working on something, so I, I need you to just 
a little bit tonight, just be patient with me because when you are in the process of delivering something and changing the mindset and how people think and how people, how people have operated for years, sometimes it can become difficult when a person has a certain mindset as to how they believe God moves. And so the Lord had to really deal with me about some things and show me that sometimes we are operating just out of, just out of our sheer, sheer innocence of obedience to the Lord, but we don't really know what we're actually doing. You know, we just, we just move it in obedience. I've always just moved into the obedience of the Lord, and sometimes I didn't know the depth of what was going on. I just know what I heard, and later on the Lord would confirm to me that I have heard him. And so all of the years that I have been operating in ministry and the Lord just dealing with me, he took me back, Dr. Morgan, to a very familiar passage of scripture. And he did not want me to get lost in the familiarity of how we have read it. This is a faith ministry. It always has been a faith ministry. Everything that, that, that Dr. Boyd has ever done, everything he's ever taught us, uh, we came into the ministry understanding that every building we've ever gotten that we've called the church the people has always had more money than we had and more favor than we had and and more credit than we had but we always ended up with the property <laughs> and so and so the lord has always uh taken advantage of constantly putting um the house of bethel the house of bethel the place of struggle the house of bethel it's a peculiar kind of people that, that would belong to a place named Bethel. Amen. Because everybody wants it easy, and a lot of people want to be able to name it and claim it and speak it and get it. But how many know that it's a process? And so when the Lord is desiring to process you, he's designed to do a complete work. Not just, not just touch you and just make you feel good and just have you with the victory for the moment. And that's what I have to deal with because the Lord has really been dealing with my heart about eternal victory. About, about victory that never fades. There is a faith in God. There is a victory walk in God that never fades. There is, there is a place that you can get to in the Lord, in your walk of faith, that your faith can never be shaken. Okay, I'm going to just, thank you, Jesus. Never taken. I'm not, I'm not moved. So when he brought this scripture to me, Hebrews 11 chapter and the first verse, Catherine, one of you all should need to read for me if you don't mind. Hebrews 11 chapter and the first verse. And I'm going to be reading from the Amplified Bible. I'm going to be reading from the Amplified Bible. So those of you that plan to come to prayer, please get your Amplified Bible because we're going to be teaching and ministering from that. Okay, what does it say in the first, the first verse? And I know it's familiar, but just, just, just give me a minute. Okay, just give me a minute. We're going we're gonna to walk through this for a little bit, just a little bit. What does it say? Now, faith is the assurance, mm -hmm. the confirmation, mm -hmm. the title deed mm -hmm. of the things we hope for, mm -hmm. being the proof of things we do not see, mm -hmm. and the conviction of their reality. Now, when you stop right there, the first thing that I feel that the Lord wants us to understand is that it says here that it is a faith that is the conviction. It must be a conviction of their reality. And so when I saw that word conviction, sometimes the Lord would give you words that would bring about association to help you, to help you understand what he's trying to say to you. When I got saved and I came to the altar and I came to know the Lord and, um, I was sitting in my pew, I got convicted. I became convicted, not condemned. Condemnation runs you away from God. Conviction brings you to God. And so I got convicted when I heard the word of God. In hearing the word of God, I was convicted. And why I was convicted, how my conviction took place is that the word of God, it, 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 it was preached to a, to, a, to a certain level that it bypassed Everything that I wanted and desired emotionally. Most of us that have come to church, that have accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, did not come that day to get saved. Most of us was taken off guard. You know, the, the power hit the building and you found yourself on the altar. You know, you, you hadn't even thrown away your stuff yet. You just, 
you was on the altar worried about what you gonna tell your boyfriend. Oh my God, I done, I done messed around and got saved. Now what I'm gonna do with my weed and what I'm gonna do with my, I done just bought all that alcohol. I gotta throw all that stuff out. You always, you always caught off guard when you come to know the Lord because you become convicted and conviction takes place because the word of God has the power to cut between the soul and the spirit. So, the, so listen, the word of God doesn't regard the soulless realm when it is destined to operate in your life. It will look over, it will look over where you are, what you've done, what you think you want. And when the timing of the Lord is right, he sends his word, his word penetrates your heart. And when it penetrates your heart, you become convicted and it instantly causes you to believe that out of all that I've done, this very moment right here, I'm now saved. This very second, doesn't matter what I've done, all the stuff that I've done, I'm now saved. I'm, I'm right now, at this very instance, I'm, I'm saved. I, last night, I was just prostituting, and then you know, 60 seconds on the altar, I'm now saved. And the, and the real problem is it, I believe it. I'm crazy enough to believe it. Now, how did, how did... That happened for me. I, I believed it because the word penetrated my heart, caused me to come be convicted, and I surrendered. I surrendered to the word. So when the Bible starts talking about talking about taking the body of Christ. He began to talk to me about, 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 about giving us and releasing to us the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. That, that wasn't no touch it, name it, claim it faith. That wasn't no Mercedes faith. That was once delivered unto the saints. That, that a car ain't got nothing to do with the kind of faith that God is about to release to the body of Christ. He said this faith has got to be a faith that comes with conviction. Which means it's a word that I got from God. And when it hit my spirit, I know what my circumstance is. But I believe it. It, it, it don't look good right now. It don't, it don't feel good right now. I don't... I don't, I don't have everything that I want, but, 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 I'm, but I'm convicted. See, when you get convicted, when you get convicted, when you first get saved and you get convicted, there's stuff, uh, mother, you don't do no more. You can't, you can't help yourself. I'm, I'm going to say something so powerful right here. You can't help yourself. When you get convicted and the word really penetrates your heart, you can be standing right in the midst of sin. You can be right there. Love it and, 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 and let me help you And you want to do it and, and, and there's something in you That's saying touch it, taste it, handle it but, but, but then there's something That just won't let you And the thing that won't let you Is not your emotions Because your emotions have already surrendered To the weakness It is the word that is in you Because the Bible said that God never promised to keep us He promised to keep his word so when he looks up and finds his word in you, though you are weak, he has to keep his word even if you don't want to be kept. So, 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 so the word, the word then becomes a, a conviction to the point that I know this is what I used to do, but this is who I am. Watch this. I know this is what I used to be, but this is who I am right now. I know, I know what I used to walk in, but this is what I walk in now. And so in order for people to maintain a consistent level of faith, it has to be an impartation of the word of God to keep them being able to say, I know my body is sick, but I'm healed. <laughs> I know I don't have no money in the bank, but yet I can have everything that I need. Who am I talking to right now? I know that there's trouble all around me, but poof, yet I feel peace. Because my faith is not my feelings. My faith, my faith is not, I'm, I'm going to prove it to you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to prove it to you how the enemy has, has tricked us for so long about, about our feelings. You know, I feel like I, I feel all right. I feel God going gonna to do it for me. I feel like he's going to fix it. Well, 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 this faith says, faith perceiving as real fact, what is not revealed to the senses. In other words, senses, I'm going to help somebody tonight, don't have nothing to do with this. As a matter of fact, what God is doing for me right now 
it has not been revealed to my senses. I'm going to help somebody right now. So in other words, when I get depressed, then my depression becomes my witness that God is really doing what he said he was going to do because it is not revealed to my senses. When God is moving on my behalf, I'm not supposed to feel like he's moving. I'm not getting nobody to say amen right there. I'm not getting nobody to hardly say nothing right there. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. As a matter of fact, the day I start crying, that's the day God start moving. Because he said, when I'm weak, then am I strong. Y'all ain't, y'all. My tears to me that what God is about to do in me, my emotions have been separated from from the movement of God, from the will of God, Jesus. It hasn't been revealed to my senses that God has, 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 has given me the victory. It has not been revealed to my senses that the Lord has already made a way. It has not been revealed to my senses. See, I'm going to help us right here because we come to church too much with this. But how you feel today? Honey, I'm blessed of the Lord and highly favored. And you know you're depressed. You know, you know you're depressed. You know you 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 ain't you ain't feeling all. But I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. So then what we do is we get into we get into a false feeling of faith. Jesus. Lord have mercy. How you doing? I I just feel that's all right. I'm 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 I'm, I'm blessed. No, 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 no. We're supposed to say, I, I don't feel good, but God, but God is moving something for me today. Uh-huh, I, I'm crying right now, but God is fixing something for me today. See, a lot of us is in the God gonna do it realm, and God is not in the God gonna do it. God is in the realm that he has already done it. God is in the realm that the minute he spoke it, now see, this changed my life. It may not change your life, but this changed my life. See, in the beginning, in the beginning, in the beginning, when God stepped out and he began to create the heavens and the earth, but being a, he didn't create the, this, this is how we see creation. We see creation and God spoke it and said, let there be light. And then there was light. God said, let there be a sea. And then... There was a sea. This, 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 this is how we've been trained to think. My Bible said, and God said, let there be light. Light was there. It wasn't no and then. Uh-uh. The minute he said, light was there. The minute God said, the minute God said, do it. It was there. So, 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 so by the way, how do I know he did it? How do I know that the Lord, I'm prophesying this to somebody. How do I know that God has already did for you what he said he was going to do? How many people in here feel the presence of God? How many people in here know that we're in the presence of God right now? Well, the Bible said that my word cannot come back to me void. So if you're in God's presence, <laughs> then everything that God has ever spoken in your life has already taken place because his word cannot come back into his presence unless it has done what he sent it to do do you know what that means that means when you start praising God because you feel the presence of God in your life that is God trying to let you know I done already done it because the word can't come back to me unless it's already done what I told it to do. It can't come back to me unless it's already accomplished and prospered in the thing where to I send it. So every time the power of God hits you. Every time you feel his presence. Oh, see, I know what I'm talking about. Every time you feel his presence overtake you, he has, he has just fix something. I can't. I can't. I'm trying to get you into the now. I, I'm, I'm trying to get you into the now. Well, why don't I see it? Well, why, why don't I see it? Because our spirit is in the God going to do it. Our spirit is not in the now. 
because the now faith says he has done it and the now faith says I don't have to see it to know that he has done it the now faith says I'm supposed to walk as if it's already happened the now faith says I'm not supposed to keep asking him over and over and over again as if I don't believe him the now faith says every time I think about it I'm supposed to praise him because he has already done it the now faith says I don't have to know where it's coming from I can trust God when I can't trace God when I don't know where he's coming from I still believe him let me help you with that my faith in God is not watch this watch this the faith that was once delivered unto the saints is not the kind of faith that says God give me a car God give me a house God give me give me give me give me give me it, 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 it has nothing to do with that God, God. Because, because the real faith of God the real faith of God is not is not God give me the real faith of God is a posture it's not what's in God's hand it's what's in God's heart the real faith of God says I don't need a Mercedes to prove that I walk in faith the real faith of God says he don't have to give me a mansion for me to walk in the authority of faith because that may not be my faith assignment too many people in here are trying to embark on another man's faith assignment because you got a Mercedes it doesn't mean God gonna ever give me one that may not be his will for me I'm gonna lose a whole lot of y'all right there I'm gonna I'm 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 calm down because pastor I'm gonna lose a lot of people right there because see that's why that's why we got a lot of people coming to church and everybody wants stuff I'm waiting on my Mercedes and I'm waiting on my car and I'm waiting on no Hebrews 11 chapter and around the 33rd verse says that those that were honored that walked in the hall of faith they lived in holes and caves you don't hear me they didn't have money they didn't even know where their next meal was coming from but yet they walked in a realm in God that they can speak y'all don't hear me they can speak to the elements in the sky and the sun would have to stand still that's the kind of faith God is trying to release his faith level is bigger than a car he's trying to get you to a place that when the weather man say it's going to be a tornado you can step outside look out at the sky and command it to go in another direction I'm talking about I'm talking about the kind of faith that, 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 that you can sit in this building right now and release something in your house and by the time you get back home see y'all y'all I, I, I can't I can't I can't get nobody to go to that level right there because because that level right there that ain't average okay let me show you let me show you something let me show you something let me show you something Sit down for a minute. Let me show you something. Let me show you. It, 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 ain't, it, ain't, it ain't average. Whew. I'm going to tell you why it ain't average. I'm going to tell you why it ain't average. It ain't average because this is what we say. We say, Jesus, help me. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. I hear people say that so much. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. And so, and so the Jesus we hollering out to is the Jesus that's on the cross. And the Jesus we hollering out to is the one that rose. The Bible said in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. And the word was made flesh and the word dwelt on us. Mm. So then the word took on a fleshly, a fleshly form. But when the word went to the cross and the word was crucified and the word went to the, to the grave, Jesus, Jesus didn't go to the grave. Jesus didn't get no keys to death, heaven, or grave. The word is what had the power to get the keys. And so, and so, and so, and so when we say, help me, Jesus, and you don't have the word, then Jesus can't help you because it is illegal for the spirit of God to move where there is no word. See, a lot of y'all said, help me, Holy Ghost. He ain't never getting ready to help you. He can't help you. He can't help you without the word. If you don't have the word there first, the spirit can do nothing. See, I'm going to tell you what I'm doing right now. 
I'm tearing down. Can you pray for me? Can you touch and agree? I'm tearing down all the stuff that's written in the back of your Bible that ain't finna come to pass. I'm tearing down all of your, I decree it and name it and claim it. It's not going to happen. And the reason, okay, my prove it. Let me prove it. Go to Mark 4. Go to Mark 4. Go to Mark 4. Go to Mark 4. Mark 4. Mark 4. And 24. What did he say? What did he say, Catherine? And he said to them, uh -huh. be careful what you are hearing. Wait, 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 wait. Be careful. Be careful what you are hearing because faith coming by hearing and hearing. Faith coming by hearing and hearing. Faith coming by. Proverbs Bible, I'm trying to believe God. And I just, I just keep, I just keep getting, 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 just feeling bad. I, I lost my faith. When you put the word of God in your spirit, you can't lose your faith. My emotions may be out of whack that day, but I ain't lost no faith. God, I wish I had somebody. How do I know what I'm talking about to be the truth? How many times, Rabina, have you prayed about stuff and you done forgot you prayed about it? And your life went in another direction and then bam, here it comes and God does it. And you know what? He does it 10 years later. You know why? Because there is no failure in the world. I lost my faith. But well, 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 where did you put the word? I put the word in my spirit. What? Okay, come on, somebody. Then, 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 then what's happening is, then what's happening is, how do I know that I'm on the brink of what God said I can have? Because then the book of Luke and the book of Mark says, that when you see the anxieties of this world and the cares of this life and the light bill and the gas bill and the rent and everything starting to happen listen it ain't no attack from the devil it's the enemy coming after the word because he knows that if he keeps your mind y'all ain't saying nothing he said i will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me the word the word the word the word not not on some spirit realm because too many of us are operating in a spirit realm without the word and so you in your own level of belief. And see, when you walk in your own level of belief, then you have to cushion yourself all the time with stuff that help you to believe. This is my favorite tape right here. This is my favorite preacher's tape right here. I listen to this tape right here every morning. And every time I feel like this, I put this one on. And when I feel like this, I call so-and-so. And so what it is, we're not in real faith. We got a lot of crutches. We got tapes and we got books. But I'm talking about the kind of faith that if your tape recorder break, God's still going to do it. If your faith and prayer partner don't call you no more, God's still going to do it. Why? Because my faith is not my feelings or my friends or my favorite tape. My faith is the word. Okay. <laughs> you know, I'm preaching too hard. Let me... Let me show you how to get a quick miracle. Let me show you how to get a quick one. God, I need. I, mm. Okay. Catherine, finish that because I want y'all to hear this. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you and more besides will be given to you okay. who hear. Okay. Let me help you right there. Let me help you right there. When I said a few minutes ago, you can name it, claim it, decree it, you ain't gonna have it. You're not getting ready to get it. I ain't gonna tell me that. I'm telling you, you're not gonna get it. Well, how can you say I ain't gonna get it? Because John 17 and 17 says the word of God is truth. And then now Mark 4 says, let the same measure of truth that you hear and study will be the same, the same, the same measure of virtue and knowledge that will be given to you and more besides. Okay, let me just help you with that. The United States press money for a living. That's how we have our currency. They press money. The United States cannot press a billion dollars worth of money all over the world 
and they only got $200,000 worth of gold. Because if they pressed a billion dollars, a billion dollars worth of green money, and they only have $200,000 worth of gold, everything that's over $200,000 is counterfeit money. Okay, I don't need to say nothing else. Because more than half of us in here are counterfeit Christians. Because we only have $200,000 worth of work, but we claiming billion dollar projects in God. And anything that you name and claim, and you don't have word to back it up, you are a counterfeit. Which means you will circulate for a while, but you will get caught. circulate for a while and you look like you big stuff but you'll get caught y'all ain't saying something I don't hear you saying that because you look around ain't none of that coming to pass and then you mad and you ready to leave the church but the Bible said with the same magic then then I don't need a prophecy okay I'm gonna, please sit down and let me say this please sit down and let me say this I don't need no prophecy I don't need you to say God, let me tell you God told me to tell you I don't thank you very much, baby. But he already told me. You, you know, I see God give me to do some great. I know. I know. But, you know, he told me to tell you that, honey, your cup get ready. I know. Because my cup runneth over at my dining room table. My cup runneth over when I'm laying in my bed. My cup runneth over on my break on my job. My cup runneth over when I get up in the morning. Every time I read the word, you don't hear me. You don't hear me. I know what I got coming. I don't need you to tell me. You ain't got to prophesy to me. I know what God is about to do for me. Because the same measure of the word that I put in my spirit is what I am going to get back. You ain't got to like me. You can hate my guts. But you can't stop the word from coming up. Sit down because I don't want to preach like that. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Just touch somebody. Touch somebody and say, I got something coming. Okay. Touch somebody and say, I got something coming. I said, touch your neighbor and say, I got something coming. Tell them it's on the way. What's on the way? Everything that I learned. Everything that I planted. Everything that I started. Sit down, because I said I wasn't going to talk to myself. Of you. See, let me get you, let me get you blessed right quick. That's why when people come to church and uh, people call you out and they prophesy to you and I can be sitting over here. They ain't even talking to me. But I see, sister. That God about to break open in your life and you go to running down the aisle like somebody talking to you. He ain't talking to you. But what's being confirmed is what is what's in your spirit. What's being confirmed is what is what I read just last night. So you know you ain't gotta point your finger at me and say, you stand up. But the minute you start speaking my language, the word of God becomes confirmed in my spirit. Okay, 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 sit down, let me just, let me, just let, me, let me say this. See, that's why when the Bible said the anxieties and the cares of this world, it come to choke your word. Come on, I'm talking to somebody right now. And see, and see, I'm getting ready to take somebody to another level of faith right now. Because what you got to get to a point, you got to get to a point where you tell the devil, well, I tell you what, don't call me no more telling me you're going to put me out. Just give me three hours because I'm going to pack my bags. And you can have this house. As a matter of fact, I'm coming back to the dealership and I'm going to give you back your car. Because you're not going to choke my word. You're not going to steal my word. I recognize you, Satan. This ain't about no car. This ain't about no house. This ain't about nothing else. But you're trying to get the word. Nobody just 
is praising God because because Pastor Boyd, that's how that's how we have survived. That's why that's why other people that had a stroke and died. The thing that kept you alive, the word. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. You see. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. God, help me, help me, help me to calm down. Sit down for a minute, sit down for a minute. Sit down for a minute. Word, word, word. I gotta show you something. I gotta calm down so I can show you something. I'm gonna say this one more time. It is illegal for the Spirit of God. See, it is the spirit of God, Dr. Johnson, it is the spirit of God that moves. It, it, the spirit of God moves. The spirit of God don't move, Pastor, and go sit down. It keeps moving. See, that's why you can't never, let no, you can't never judge your praise by Sister Watermelon sitting next to you. Because I'm going to tell you why some people in church really get blessed and others really don't. Because when the spirit of the Lord starts moving, that spirit is on an assignment. It ain't just moving because it want to bless everybody. It, it's, it's, it's searching. It's searching for his word. And that's why one person can get up and run to the back of the church and somebody else can sit there with their legs crossed like God ain't in the building. And that's why you can't let nobody judge the way you praise God. Because when you hear the word and it brings confirmation to your spirit, that is the spirit of the Lord speaking you up. I'm in the spirit realm. Yes, I said that. Yes, I'm going to do that. Yes, it's done. Yes, you got a right to pray. The spirit brings confirmation. saying to you is confirming something just touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor excuse me for a minute because I've been holding this all night long because I'm trying to be nice because I'm sitting next to you but I can't hold it no more because the spirit is making intercession When I found this out, I stopped looking for people to help me. When I found this out, I stopped looking for people to help me. When I got a hold of this, I stopped looking to flesh. Who am I preaching to? When I got a hold to this revelation, I knew that everything I needed, all I had to do was read. Watch this. You don't believe it. You don't believe it. You don't believe it. 14. Go to John 14. Go to John 14. He can't. Okay, let me have you. you, you. Some of us, Val is in some expensive stores in the spirit. And we got a whole lot of stuff on our shopping cart. And we get into the counter and we ain't got enough money. Huh. Can I just help you with this? And let me, and please don't, please don't get offended when I say that. God is not impressed with people. Watch this. He pitied us one time. Help us. He ain't feeling, he ain't feeling sorry for you, Andre. 
God ain't up there going, I just, I just feel so bad for you. Just angels gone and just help Melissa. Because she's been crying every day. Yes, sir. Just help her because look at where she is. And she your child. Help her. And here you go. Help me, Jesus. Help me, God. I need your help, Lord. I need your help. And God is anxious. And he wants to. He said, I want to help her. God. He said, I want to help her. God, help me. Don't you see? He said, I do see. God, don't you know what I'm going? I do know. But you want me to heal you from cancer and you only have two scriptures. And I said that when I start moving, I'm going to move for my word's sake. I'm going to move for my name's sake. I don't think y'all hear what I'm talking about yet. Some of y'all don't want to go with that. I can't move because you cry. Who am I preaching to right there? I can't help you because it's bad. I can only do it if you put my word. He said, put me in remembrance of my word. Stop reminding me about your situation. to get me to do it and I can't just be jumping all over the earth because everybody start crying everybody's crying no I'm gonna help somebody right here everybody crying but who I help is who takes responsibility for their results no no see okay see okay I'm, 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 I'm gonna help you I'm going to prove to you what I'm saying to you is the truth. It is, I won't die. He said, how, how bad do you want it? When I got up this morning, I had to go. I got up this morning. I took a shower. I got in my car. All the way to work. I, I, I listened to Cece, my favorite tape. And then I got to work. And I went to my desk. And I opened up my computer. And I started working. My first break. I got some cookies and some coffee, and I jaw jacked with, with gin in them. And then 15 minutes was up, and I went back to my, I went back to my cubicle, and I started back to work. And after work was over with, I stopped and got me some Popeyes. I came home and picked up the kids. I got back home, I sat down and started watching Girlfriends. And when Girlfriends went off, I started watching Frasier. And when Frasier got off, I got up and put my clothes and got my clothes together for work tomorrow. I put the kids to bed. By the time I got in the bed, I was tired. But you the same person next time and said, help me, God. No, I want to help you, but Popeyes took precedent over my word. I want to help you, but Jenny and them on your break took precedent over my word. I want to help you. Y'all ain't hear me. But you'd rather watch girlfriends than to get your spirit right. Now, if you want help, call girlfriends. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. The reason why we cannot speak our deliverance into existence because the Bible said out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh and what's in your heart is girlfriends what you full of is gossip I'm not hearing nobody preach back to me what you full of is your trouble what you full of is another man's mess but when you get full of the word, you can't help yourself. That's what I keep coming out of your mouth. My dad said, well, how you going to make it? God going to bring me out. I'm going to tell you something. You have to almost start looking like you're borderline crazy. You, know, you have to get a little retarded when you get in that level. Because people start looking and say, well, your car done broke down. How you going to get? Oh, God going to make a way. Well, how you gonna pay your, 
I ain't worried about it. Gotta work it out. Well, where you gonna live? Well, uh, in a shelter, if that's what God want me to live for right now. But well, don't you feel bad? No. But what you gonna do about a job? Well, I, why? Well, you ain't worried? You, how you gonna feed your baby? Baby, let me calm you down. He knows the way that I take. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And I got enough word level in me to know that when he's tried me, I'm coming out as pure gold. No, come on here, somebody. I just, see, see, okay, I'm, 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 I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna help you right now. I'm, 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 I'm closing with this. Let me just, let me just. Okay, Catherine. Go to, go, go to John 14. See, I'm trying to get you out the prayer line. Because what I'm trying to help you to understand. There's going to be some days you're going to need God And you ain't going to have enough money to make it to church There's going to be some days you're going to need God And your phone going to be turned off There's going to be some days that you're going to have to trust God And the kind of faith you're going to have to walk in Ain't nobody around you got that kind of faith God who am I preaching to right now I'm trying to get you disassociated With the, with the emotionalism of what church brings I just said something right there Let me, let, me, let me just say this right quick. Why is it that in this building right now, the majority of people here feel like, oh, I just feel good so much. Ooh. And the service is over and they say, honey, that was so powerful. Oh, well, <laughs> and come Wednesday, you still, this one is saying, I just need to talk to you. You know why? Because some of us are sitting here under the umbrella of another man's word level. See, that's why we can trust God as long as we're in the sanctuary. Because, because if I'm full of the word and Pastor full of the word and Andre, you full of the word and Catherine, you don't read your word. When the spirit of the Lord starts moving, the level of the anointing, I'm going to help somebody. I'm going to help you to understand why. Why the anointing in some churches is not as high as it is in others. Because the spirit of the Lord doesn't move outside of the word level. And when the word level is high, the spirit of the Lord comes and he must match the word. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. I'm, be, be, because the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit were well, one, one, one greater than the other one. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. So the Spirit of the Lord cannot show up greater than the level of the Word. It has to be even exchange. It has to be an even movement, or it is not authentic. I'm just going to quit and leave it alone. I'm just going to quit and leave it alone because because I'm trying to tell you I'm trying to tell you what I'm saying is the truth, Pastor. Okay, I'm, I'm, just let me prove it right here. Catherine, read John, John 14 and 26. But the comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor. Wait, 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 wait. But the comforter, I want you to hear this. But the comforter, the counselor, the helper, the, 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 the intercessor. Read it. The advocate, the strengthener, the standby, the Holy Spirit. Okay, okay. All of the stuff that she just named, Pastor, is all the stuff that we call on the Holy Spirit to do for us. Help me. Counsel me. Intercede for me. You don't hear me. Strengthen me. Stand by me, Lord. When won't nobody else stand by me? But what does the Bible say? Whom the Father will send in my name. Who the Father will send in my name. In my place. In my place. To represent me. To represent me. And act on my behalf. And act in my behalf. Which means when the Holy Spirit comes to be a comforter and a counselor and a teacher and a helper and a standby, he is coming to stand in the space of the world. He ain't moving by himself. So let me just help you with this. Um, 
Uh, so when you said, Lord, give me strength, it, it, it has to be the joy of the Lord is my strength. Now, Lord, give me strength. Then you ain't got to doubt whether or not strength going to come because the Holy Spirit now is obligated to move on behalf of the word. <laughs> he comes to stand in the stead of the word. He is the standby of the word. He moves according to the word. Move. Read it, Catherine. What does he say? He will teach you all things. Uh-huh. And he will cause you to recall. Uh -huh. Will remind you of. Wait, 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 wait. He will teach you all things. And he will cause you to what? Recall. Uh huh. Will remind you of. Uh huh. Bring to your remembrance everything I have told you. All right, then, 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 then. then. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. That's why six years from now I can still keep shouting. Uh-huh. Because when I got the word, he keeps coming back to remind me. Y'all ain't hear me. Don't let the devil talk to you like that. Because I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is on the rise to remind somebody. Forget about what you feel right now. What did I say? What did I tell you? What did I, what did I tell you I was going to do? What did I tell you I was going to do? I never lost a case. I never lost a case. I never failed. What did I say? I didn't ask you how you felt. I didn't tell you to do it. I told you to stand on my word. Oh, God. Oh, yes. Word, Rabina. I'll I finish. I'll finish this tomorrow because I, I don't want y'all to get just. Why his word? Because heaven and earth may pass away, but my word shall forever stand. Why his word? Because his word was not delivered out of emotions. Why his word? Because his word was released before the foundation of the world was made. Therefore, the existence of the world is not based upon anything that happens emotionally in our system. Why the word? Because the word has the ability to operate outside, outside of the earth realm. Why the word? Because the word was here before the world was formed. Why the word? Because the word ain't never needed nobody to help it. Why the word? Because the word ain't never been in position to be offended by nobody so it won't work. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. Why the word? Why, why he said because the word is not connected to all of that as a matter of fact when the word start coming it divides the soul and the spirit the first thing it does it goes in and cuts asunder the soul and the spirit it gets your emotions out of the way and then it starts bringing you into remembrance of what he said that's why you can shout when you don't see nothing that's why you can praise God when it looks like it's going backwards I'm not shouting because I feel like it I'm shouting because I got a word from God go I'm gonna go but I'm just looking for 21 people and I'm gonna tell you why I'm looking for 21 people because for 21 days oh God come on somebody the prayers was held up it was already done God had already done it but but but, but God told Daniel when you prayed I heard you when you prayed I had already answered you okay now sit down for a second right now but, but Sit down so I can see who I'm talking to. So, so why did the Lord bring me? Why did the Lord bring me in this building tonight? To wake up your remembrance. Because some of y'all done threw your prophecy in the garbage. Some of y'all think that because of all the stuff that you done been through, God ain't going to do it. Oh, I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. Some of y'all think because you failed God, God ain't going to do it. But see, let, me tell you, let me tell you something. God said, I'm not a man that I should lie. Neither the son of man that I should repent. I knew what was going to happen to you when I prophesied it to you. I knew what kind of condition you were going to be in when I said I was going to do it. I didn't prophesy that to you because you was good. Sit down. Let me say this because I got to help you. Because a lot of y'all in religion. And you letting people mess you up, I ain't gonna, it ain't gonna happen because you know what, I, I fell and I messed up and now I just, honey, God calculated mess up in it when he said it. God calculated your humanistic goal when he said it. God already knew.
knew what you was going to do and what you wasn't going to do when he said it. Well, why did he say it? He said it because his word has the potential to get you to your destiny. Even if you mess it up, who am I to? The reason why he gave you the word, not because you were so correct. Let me help you. Because in 60 seconds, God gave me to shoot you back to your place. I said in 60 seconds, God gave me to shoot you back to yourself. He got me to get you back on track because some of y'all been knocked off track. Well, Lord. I messed up. And I ain't, I ain't done it right. I missed you. So, so then why? Mm. Mm. Okay, well, let me just help you with something. That ain't the kind of God we serve. He ain't that petty. My God, my God. God ain't that petty. Mother boy, God don't speak it like this. Now you go ahead and I'm going to speak this word over you. I'm going to raise you up to be a mighty woman of God. I'm going to take you all over the world. If I can tell you how many times I've messed up before I got all over the world. But why did God, why did God choose, why did God choose Dr. Morgan to speak a word? Because he knew that the word was the only thing that could outlast who I am. He knew I was going to come in and out of my emotions. He knew I was going to come in and out of my situations. But his word was going to still be there pulling me all the way. His word was going to still be there walking me to my destiny. Y'all, I, listen, I wish I had somebody. I wish I had somebody. That, see, his the only thing that's not affected by your circumstance. His word don't move by your circumstance. His word moves by his will. Who am I talking to right now? His word is not activated because you feel good. But if that's the case, every woman in here, every month when you have cramps, you lose your faith for four days. Then that means during them four days, the devil can take my whole destiny out, Maria. He can just wipe me out. All the devil got to do to every woman is wait till your cycle. That's how I know that what God is about to do in my life, it ain't got nothing to do with what I feel. It ain't got nothing to do with what you say. It ain't got nothing to do with how I think. It's got everything to do with him putting out his word. I'm going, Pastor. I learned this. People can't, people can't move in God because it is the Word that activates movement. I, I just said something right there. People can't move in God. Like move out in God. Walk in faith. You, you can't walk in faith because faith ain't a feeling. It's His Word. You, you, you hear what I say? Faith is his word. Okay. Looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of my faith, which means my faith can't get started without the word. And my faith can't mature and produce nothing for me without the word. Because faith in God is his word. It ain't faith, and then here's the word. Faith is the word. And so, so then the body of Christ characterized faith as this. If you got a big house and a big car, and you live on the mountainside, and you drive a plane, and you got all this stuff, you got a whole lot of faith. And then if you live in the projects, and you ain't hardly got no money, and you ain't hardly got nothing, then you ain't got no faith. That's what they say in the body of Christ now. Everybody's got a whole lot of stuff. You the people with a whole lot of faith. And everybody living the projects, honey, you just keep on praying and God gonna increase your faith. But let me help you with something. You got some people that's riding some planes and riding some Mercedes and Rolls Royce, can't cast the devil out of nothing. And then you got some people that live in the projects that the devil is absolutely afraid of. Oh, come on, I'm here. Listen, listen, listen here. Faith ain't stopped and your level of faith cannot be denoted by how much stuff you get. If that's the case, then Puffy Combs got more faith than anybody.
يا بطل nobody say nothing because the devil will bless you y'all ain't hearing me I said the devil will bless you with a car he'll give you a house and you still don't have faith because faith ain't stuff faith is a posture faith is a position Faith is whatsoever state I'm in. I'm content. Faith is I shall not be moved. Faith is I've learned to be a base and I've learned to be a bound. Faith is when I'm up, I still praise him. When I'm down, I still praise him. When I'm rich, I give him glory. And when I'm broke, I give him even more glory. Faith is not stopped. I'm going to finish this. I'm going to finish this because I had a whole lot more to tell you. Mm. Mm. See, I'm going to tell you why I get quiet when you preach messages like this. Because they start making people responsible for their own destiny. Well, the reason why I didn't make it because, Pastor, you didn't pray for me. And the reason why I was going through, and I'm just really offended because I've been in church all this long time and didn't nobody pick up what I was going through. And wasn't nobody sensitive about what I was doing. And I just, I'm just hurt. I'm just hurt because, honey, I was going through in my rent and didn't nobody help me. Faith in God. Watch this. It's not the fact that God does it my way every time. And I'm gonna tell you why, because, because he said I am able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all I can ask or think according to the power that work in me. So there are some things that I'm going to ask God to do for me, Rabina, that I have not gone far enough in my level of purification. And what I'm asking for is beneath what he desires for me to have so in those moments he will ignore my request but when the Lord doesn't do it the way I told him and with the way I thought he should have he hasn't failed he's doing something greater now you don't hear me he not he not going backwards he's doing something exceedingly and abundantly and above all you can ask or think according to the power that worketh in you. So you got to understand that the minute you start asking God to do something, the Lord has already, every time you say it, he goes above what you ask. Every time you think it, he goes beyond what you think. Every time you say it, he goes beyond what you say. Why? Because he's going to do it according to the power that worketh in you. Which means, Andre, there can be a level of word in you that you will never come to speak out and ask for. I just said something like You've been reading the word all your life. Pastor Jones, you've been reading the word all your life. And you may say to the Lord, God, just bless me. God, open up a door right here for this nice condo. But you may have a $6 million level of man in you with the word. So he gives to us According to the power. The reason why he has to give it to us, Pastor, according to the power that worketh in us, because our intellect is constantly being bombarded in the human society. And so he knows that there's going to be human blocks that's going to come in the way, that's going to make you rationalize and intellectualize, and it's going to cause you to have fear to really ask for things in the level that you need to ask. So he said, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to give you the ability to ask, but I'm going to give it to you according to what's in your spirit. That's why he said, Valerie, that's why he said, Dr. Johnson, even before you ask, I'm already doing it. Even be, and then he said another scripture, and while you are asking, I'm 
already doing it because movement doesn't start with your lips. It starts with your spirit. Movement starts with your word level. Who am I talking to? I'm telling you right now that in less than 30 days you can be in a place at God that you have never been in before. That has nothing to do with a 21 day fast. I'm trying to help somebody in here. It ain't got nothing to do with shutting in the church for 40 days. If you get in your word and let the word. He said if you abide in me and my word abide in you. You shall ask whatever you will. Why am I able to ask for whatever I will? Because I have enough word level. Now I know what the scripture means when it says, you have not, because you ask not, but you have not, because you ask amiss. Amiss means your word level is here, and your asking is way out there. But when you get in a realm in God and your word, you ain't even got to ask. You just walk. See, that's what's been happening to me. That's what's been happening to me lately. Let me tell you something. Now I, can, now I can tell you why I had to come here. Now, Pastor, I can tell you why I had to come here. I'm gonna tell you why I had to come here. Now I'm gonna reveal to you why I had to come here. Because all the stuff that I had been believing God for, all, all the seeds mm. that I had sown, all that stuff that I have just Given, 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 so and so and so, and just believe, believe, believe. And the Lord began to deal with me. And I hadn't seen nothing. The Lord, I mean, I was preaching all over the country. But I hadn't seen what God said He was going to do. And about three months ago, I'm telling you, God, God is something. He speaks to me and he says, I want you to go and I want you to preach for this church. It wasn't no big major, 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 major church. But when I went there a year ago to preach for them, I didn't want to go preach. And the Lord said, I want you to go to preach for this preacher. And then nobody really knew who he was. And so I went. When I left that man's place, and this is something that you don't believe, but I'm going to help you tonight. I'm going to help you to understand why he didn't bring you here. I'm going to help you to understand that tonight is so prophetic for your life that the radio broadcast and the Love Express paper did not get you here. I'm going to tell you what season you have just walked into. I went to the ministry and I had written my books. And in the last several months, they said, well, you know what? You, 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 you do this and you do that and you do that and you get on New York Times bestsellers list. And you do all that stuff. And uh, we had missed all the deadlines for all the stuff that you're supposed to do to get on the New York Times bestsellers list. Yeah, yeah. And so when, the Lord, when I went to this man's church in December and God spoke that word to me and he gave me that word, out of the clear, when God gave me that word, <laughs> the word that I'm going to release in this building tonight, the reason why I had to preach this message for a book popped up on the New York Times bestsellers list. Everybody was shocked. Well, well, how in the world did that happen? And I said, God, what are you doing? Not only did that not happen, but the next time when I went back this past December, John Maxwell, who is one of the greatest writers of our time in Christendom, was in a building in Atlanta. And I went to visit this church. And I had been looking for a studio to tape for television and God said to me I want you to stop moving and what you're asking me for because this is what God just